I don't suppose you could give me a sample of your brain tissue for study purposes. Oh, Doctor, by the time the students go through these exploration goals and the challenge missions that this video helps them with, they'll have brains so big they'll have plenty extra tissue for you to sample. If you've poked around StarCraft's menu, you may have seen this exploration area and the guide sections. There are a set of goals for each of these guides. Guide 1 um, has a set of goals that have you doing a few AI games, three cooperative games, and then three challenge missions, which are sort of tutorial missions, and you've done the goals for Guide 1. You can move on to Guide 2 and build on that. And if you went to Guide 2, you would do some games against the AI, artificial intelligence, as each race. Um, you do an actual league match, and also do more challenge missions, and then have some more um, expertise in StarCraft and have to go on to Guide 3 where you do free-for-all, you learn how to look at replays, you do more league matches and so forth, more challenge and the challenge missions themselves would be the core of this. There's three basic ones, three more advanced and three expert ones that go over a number of tactics and strategies that help you with StarCraft. This video is going to cover that, especially the challenge mission starting with the first Tactical command. Commander, your objective in this exercise is to use limited forces to defend three supply depots. The supply depots are widely spaced. You will need to split up your forces to create a guard detail for each one. You should attempt to form groups that will effectively counter the enemy units deployed against them. When you have completed your deployment, press the ready button to proceed. And a variation on that drill is what you're doing in all three of these basic missions. Let's see what we're up against. Over here in this corner, Mutalisk. Up here, Zerglings. And over here, Banelings. And this is our force. We have to figure out how to divide this into three separate forces to counter each force. If you go to the help tips, you look in round one, it says Hellions are really good at destroying Zerglings. It says siege tanks and siege modes are good for Banelings and for mutalisks, the uh, marines. So we'll send the marines down to where the mutalisks are, are and we'll back them up with the medevacs. We'll send the hellions up to deal with the zerglings now and what? the tank over to deal with the banelings. And then we'll Confirmed. usually have a spellcaster left over. In this case, a ghost. We'll spend that, send that ghost over with a tank also. We're not gonna go through the entire thing, especially since I did this in the middle of the night when I had a pound of fudge upstairs I wanted to get through. So this isn't exactly gold level, it's just silver slop. Um, one mistake here, we can snipe with this ghost, but we needed to move the ghost away from the tank. When the Banelings hit the tank, they won't destroy it, but the splash will get the ghost. He should have been a bit away. And there you go. If you pick the correct unit composition, you do all right there. Now in round two, we're dealing with Hydralisks, which can be hit with siege tanks. Roaches, which can be hit by marauders, and an ultralisk, which can be hit by stim marines. And those are the suggestions on the tips. You can, of course, mix and match that as you want. These tips will get you to complete the um, level, but if you want silver gold, you're going to have to fiddle with that maybe a little mix and match, and certainly work on your micro. Micro involves placement and use of individual units, possibly pulling back injured units and so forth. Going into round three, we have this force, which will face mutalisks, broodlords, and zerglings and hydralisks and roaches. And the suggested way here to deal with that is Vikings and Hellions to get the Broodlords and Zerglings, Marauders and Tanks in Siege Mode to get the hydralisks and roaches, and Thors to get the Mutalisks. I'm not gonna fight that through. This is what it would look like when you get finished, but you'll learn more if you do it yourself. On the Path of Ascension. This is basically the same drill, only with Protoss. In round one, this is our force. We're going to face some Hellions, Marines, and Marauders. Now here are some suggestions. Stalkers against Hellions, Kloss against Marines, Zealots against Marauders. Note also that there are ledges here. And also we're going to have a Spellcaster. I'll show you one thing I like to do. I like to put my Colossi up on a ledge, maybe Guardian shield my sentry, and then have it put down force fields to essentially funnel the troops into the range of the um, Colossi. On to round two, we're going to face Thors, we're going to face a large body of tanks, and also some battle cruisers. How do we deal with this? Survey says, Carriers against Thors, Immortals against Siege Tanks, that's no-brainer, and Void Rays against Battlecruisers. 
Running these straight in the shield disperses them into concave quickly. Then we're going to move up on these tanks. We really ought to let them siege first. If they're sieged, the point of being up against them is they can't hit us. Siege tanks can't hit something that's directly against them. But we might have got a little over eager here. And it's going to be a bit of a slaughter on both sides. And sometimes life is like that. So here we have a nice good victory. Well, let's just call it a victory. So let's go on to round three where we have an air force against us, Vikings and a battlecruiser, a light force of reapers and hellions, and a heavy force of marauders and a lot of tanks. And we will try to get the air force with our stalkers phoenixes, the hellions and reapers with archons and colossi, and the marauders and siege tanks will be immortals of course, and also zealots. Here we almost forgot to last minute to use our spellcaster, get that high templar up and do some storming. Don't forget things. And on this, for the swarm. These three spires. What are you, the crotchety school marm? And Blythe, what happened to you? Colossi, an immortal, and some void race. We can deal with the Colossi with this force by sending our Ultralisks in there. They won't die very quickly underneath those awful beams of, of death, but the... Um, Void Rays will be a little tougher. We'll take them down with Hydralisks. And the Immortal, we're going to try a trick on that guy. We're going to use Mind Control. We'll just use the Infester. Ought to send in a single Zerg Lady and see if we'll take him down. And that was fun. Round two. Going to have a lot of Zealots, some Void Rays and some stalkers and we can deal with those with um, roaches after the zealots mutalisks after the void rays and ultralisks after the stalkers now this part involves regenerating the roaches they do that when they're burrowed so when they get down to orange drop them down into the ground let them get green pop them up drop and pop drop and pop in round three, there are Stalkers and Immortals, Archons and Zealots, and a small air force of Carriers. To deal with the Immortals and Stalkers, use Broodlords. The Immortals can't hit them, and the Stalkers will get distracted by the Broodlings. Ultralisks and Roaches for the Archons and Zealots, and Corruptors, since they're anti-air, against the Carriers. Now, don't forget that your Spellcaster here can do more than mine. Can Coral, can do Fungal Growth, or Infested Terrans, as you see fit. Give me the sit rep. Well, we're going to use the ability of specialized units to chip away at an enemy force. You sure about that? I sure am. We'll be doing that with each of the three Sounds races, like starting here in covert ops with ghosts and ravens. Uh, we need to use these carefully, and we'll begin by sneaking up on these two detectors up here, the two spore crawlers, and hitting them from a far enough away distance no, that they can't spot the ghost and, okay. and attack. Um, using those uh, near Zerg units. And while we're doing that, we may send someone over cloaked no. to this far right hand uh, side and nuke it. And if we do that, we'll find a couple Solo of little clusters right. of units. We can cloak more yes, ghosts and send them over to hit. Um, as we nuke the one site, we'll be able then to move up to the wall and look down sure over and that? see a lot of units Base. and target them attack. and nuke them also. Ooh, yeah. It does help to be cloaked. However you do it, you need to do it carefully and methodically. Here, we're going to use a point defense drone laid down by the Raven to frustrate that Hydralisk. We're going to fire a sinkhole missile at that Overseer to kill it and anything around it. And we're simultaneously going to nuke these drones. That's what I call a productive day. But we need to move on. We can use um, our ravens to drop guns and, and whatever we want. Sonic Salt, kind of the same drill, only this in time with Protoss and their special ability. A abilities. Protoss warrior must learn to fight enemies as numerous as the stars in the sky. Wow. Use terrain on the battlefield to your advantage. Fight only when your superior warcraft will even the odds. I what? All right. Now with these sentries, we can block this ramp with two well-placed force fields. We can't block it with two poorly placed force fields, but two well-placed force fields easy. Those aren't units that have a ranged attack. For we do good with our force fields, that won't even matter much. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be doing something else by merging the High Templar to make a um, rock smasher. And then we're going to do something that isn't necessarily part of the 
plan at least as the instructions laid out but if we move up to this higher ground we can block that ramp with just one force field save a bunch of energy and then the main trick is going to be to think um, if they aren't moving all their units right up that force field and they're dribbling up a little at a time we may have to drop another one we want to save some energy in those high templar because we're going to get a force field pop up behind us and then we'll get some zerglings coming in from behind us and we'll want to storm them but before we get to that point, there's kind of the crux move of this, which is air. A couple of small probes by air will come in, and we need to be able to use hallucinations, guardian shield, whatever, um, to distract them while we take them down. You must destroy as many enemies as possible with the creatures available. Really? Scout the opposing base, and when you are ready to begin your assault, Press the ready button. Well, that makes sense. Now we're going to use our infestors here and our burrowed roaches. The infestors and mind control are really helpful here. We'll send an infestor off to the left, keeping our hand right on that key, ready to mind control this tank before it blasts the infestor. And then we'll do the same thing with the tank that's off on the right. And if we just very carefully, and not even very rapidly, just slowly and methodically, move along, uh, taking on our... Um, Colossi and tanks as we, as we edge forward, we can do a whole lot of damage. Occasionally, we'll move some roaches up and burrow them and hit something. Just take your time. Think this through. This is a chess game. Now, so far, we've been going through each of the three races at each level to learn either matchups or special abilities. The expert levels are different in that we're learning three separate concepts and the races aren't as important. Antaro Tassadar, student. In this simulation, you will learn to control large forces. Okay, I'm just going to tell you what that means. Here, you have to learn hotkeys. And hotkeys, uh, that's very important. Control groups and hotkeys. You cannot mouse down to the right bottom corner and select something and then click somewhere and do it the slow way. You have to know, um, for instance, what key to press to get production out of a building and what key to press to select a unit and what key to press to do whatever sort of spell you want to cast and so forth. So we're going to hotkey our warp gates, hotkey our warp prisms, and then hotkey each group of units. We gave one hotkey to the... Um, High Templar and the sentries, and if we select that group, we can just switch back and forth between those two units with the tab key. Now we're going to press D, shift click, do 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 do, so that we can make a lot of Dark Templar. There isn't a lot of um, vision up here. Now we're going to shift click and attack moving all these clusters and just let them run by themselves. I am intrigued. Now using control keys, I can direct the carriers to both build interceptors using the I key and attack some areas right here to the right without even looking at them, just using the mini-map and the keys. It's a little bit harder with our next group, which would be the stalkers, because they require some management. You've got to blink them up, hopefully better than that, get everything on this ledge, blink them down the next ledge, then move them forward. It's a little bit of a pain. Down here, we're going to hallucinate and use Guardian Shield, so we've got to select the sentry and, and hit G. Um, and then we're going to move forward. We really ought to be queuing up um, Storm here, too, being a little careless. This is another high maintenance area. You can attack the Mutalisks with the Phoenixes, but the Hydralisks on the ground will hit them. If you really want to save your Phoenixes, you've got to use Graviton Beam to lift those. You can combine units in one area if you want to, whatever gets you your appropriate number of kills. Welcome back, Commander. In this exercise, your base management skills will be challenged. Begin by collecting sufficient resources to expand to the extra resource area nearby. Complete the exercise by training a force before the time runs out. So expanding at least to get gas can be helpful here if you're going to gold. Um, and this is basically about macro play. This is about building your economy. Uh, micro and, and your battles don't really matter. If you have a reasonable level of forces, they take care of themselves. The question here is, can you get an economy going? Can you build fast enough? 
it gives you a suggestion of where to build initially in terms of supply depot and a barracks yeah. and a supply depot to wall off that ramp. You're going to need a lot of gas for this because, for instance, you're going to need a lot of ghosts and also tanks. Now I like to send another SCV over to close off that ramp instead of waiting for the barracks to be finished ah, and then me. continue to get the economy going. At this point we haven't SCV been rushed waiting. yet but we will be soon um, with that walled off and leaving an SCV there a right click to auto repair. It'll repair the buildings and orders? and the first Marine we get out will be able to finish off the other wings. Um, we'll get a second Marine and a third Marine though. So with the building being repaired, we should be okay. And the AI pretty much knows it's okay. The repair part. Now we skip the head. We have a few more Marines. They need to hit those roaches okay. because the Zerglings will give them sight up high. Die, die, die. Finish these Zerglings, get a few more Marines and start building tanks. At 12 minutes, if you have a factory and a barracks Complete. up that can make ghosts and an academy and you build one tank and one ghost at a time, you can make good time and get there. If you're waiting and you're going to build your economy and then try to do a crash build toward the end, um, you're going to need a bunch more buildings yeah. in the last few minutes. Here we'll build a command center and then float it down. It is safe to build down here if you have some tanks up on the ledge, although it is good to move some troops down to the right side, perhaps after they deal with the raid by mutalisks that will come early in the mission. Good afternoon, Commander. In this exercise, you must defend all of your structures against a variety of enemy attacks. In order to succeed, you will need to use your SCVs to repair your structures and to fight back against the aggressors. Alrighty, so this is pretty much standard. You're going to get a Zerg 6 pool rush here pretty quick, and you need to be able to deal with it. Um, six Zerglings, then a couple more, then a couple more, and then as they build up their economy slowly, they add more. And for the first part of this, you just need to kill off a re the requisite number of Zerglings. Um, you can see the strategy here, and we have a Marine coming. Since the Marine isn't out yet, we're going to use the SCVs to attack. And the SCVs won't do that automatically. You've got to command them. And that's kind of the point of this exercise. Huh? I'm going. SCV ready. Then be sure to get him back on task. Now for the second part of this, we won't be seeing Zerglings, we'll be seeing Zealots, and the Protoss will have a little base just over on the edge of our base, and it's basically the same drill, only the Zealots are a little bit harder to kill. And we have to go over and actually destroy their base, so we're going to have to build up a force. Um, one decent way to do that is by leapfrogging bunkers. Build bunkers close enough to your original bunker that the Marines in the bunker can cover it as it's being built. Um, then move Marines up into it, and if you want to, you can empty the bunker behind it, move them into the new bunker, and then salvage that bunker to get some more points. Salvaged the bunker there and we're moving some marines into this new one. We're confident enough here. We're not even waiting until it's ready. Um, note that if you were to try to rush right in behind that tree line, there would be a cannon down there. And until this lower pylon goes, that cannon can still whack you. 
So those are the challenge missions. Do those if you want, especially if you're new to StarCraft. And then you certainly don't have to do Guide 1, Guide 2, Guide 3, but you do need to have the skills that are listed there essentially as goals if you want to be any good at StarCraft, especially if you want to be a pro gamer. In that case, you definitely need to plug away and away and away. Run it over the same old